Supplements to prevent COVID-19 emergency use authorization proposal for the FDA right here on the show is what we're going to be talking about. The main thing I want you to get is there are supplements that prevent COVID. I am not saying prevention. It's in the research articles I'm going to share with you in just a moment. Before we get into that, remember the disclaimer here. Do not add any supplements until you talk to your doctor. Never change medications until you talk to your doctor. If you're going to do anything that you hear here in this, in this show, talk to your doctor first. Do not do it until you talk to your doctor, okay? So that's the disclaimer. And so let's get into this. <clears throat> there are, I reviewed this in, in a recent show. Here's a couple of research articles. Let me just read you the title. This is why we get into prevention with supplements. Essential sufficiency, meaning the appropriate amount of zinc, omega-3s, vitamin D, and magnesium for prevention and treatment of COVID-19, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, lung diseases, and cancer. Wow, that's the title of this article out of Biochemy, is the journal, an international journal of biochemistry and molecular biology in August of 2021. One quote out of the article, the essential nutrients, zinc, omega-3s, vitamin D, and magnesium provide the ideal combination for prevention and treatment of COVID-19. I believe the FDA should have an emergency youth authorization for those four nutrients because of that research article. The second article was zinc, vitamin D, and vitamin C. So we're adding vitamin C into the mix now. Perspectives for COVID-19 with a focus on physical tissue barrier integrity. You're hearing about the tissue barrier integrity now. That's something that you would have probably never known about until COVID-19. The, uh, the journal is Frontiers in Nutrition, December of 2020. And uh, by the way, this article has 200 references. The other article before that has 351 scientific references. So this is some really heavy stuff. I propose that we have an FDA emergency youth authorization for these following supplements. Now, how did this follow into our immune system protocol? I'm going to get into the supplements again in just a moment. Our immune system protocol for any human on the planet have these seven things. Number one is nutrition, of course. Number two is exercise. Number three is sleep. Number four is spine and chiropractic. Number five is stress. Number six is supplements. Number seven is water. So we're talking about the supplement thing here, but keep in mind this. Of those seven things, we're going to be talking about supplements for the next few minutes and the ones that you might consider taking and the ones that I do for myself and my family and what I suggest for my patients and many of my patients are doing. But keep in mind these seven things. Look at this now. You can't out-supplement a poor diet. It's, people try to do it all the time, but you can't do it. You can't out-supplement when you're not exercising regularly. You can't out-supplement yourself if you're, under, if you're not getting the appropriate sleep. If you're not taking care of your spine and, and nervous system with, with chiropractic, you, if you're not doing that, you're not going to supplement your way into that. If you have chronic stress, you're not going to supplement your way out of that either. And if you're not drinking enough water, again, same thing. Okay? So these seven things are so important to working with together. They're cofactors. They work together to improve your overall health. Now, looking at COVID-19, most of the people, unfortunately, that pass from COVID-19 are 80 or older and have comorbidities. What does that mean? They have chronic diseases, which these seven things can help prevent, and these seven things can minimize the impact or even maybe possibly remove. So if we get people that have these comorbidities or chronic diseases, if you have chronic problems, and we get them on these protocols, then we're going to have much less death from COVID-19. So I am going to expand the FDA emergency use authorization for these seven things, not just the supplements, but this protocol and this program that we need to be doing for everyone everywhere right now as an FDA directive, emergency use authorization. Okay, So let's look at the supplements here. Now, the supplements out of these articles, which we've known for a long time, we've been talking about these supplements for 25 years now. So let's look at these supplements. At the top, we have omega-3, omega-3 from fish oil, okay? 
Uh, number two is vitamin C. We've heard about that. Remember, Dr. Anthony Fauci takes 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C every day. Uh, number three is vitamin D. Talked about vitamin D a lot, and it's talked about in these articles here. Magnesium, zinc, and I want to mention one last one. So number six here is quercetin. Quercetin. You probably have read some things about this, okay? So quercetin is a, a plant flavonoid. It's an antioxidant. There's plenty of literature out there on how effective it is. One that I dug up has the title, Anti-Inflammatory Potential of Quercetin in COVID-19 Treatment. Interesting. And in this article, they were talking about that quercetin is an anti-inflammatory antioxidant, and it's a potential to reduce severe inflammation, which is the, one of the main life-threatening conditions in COVID-19. So if you can decrease inflammation, you have a better chance of coming out of it, right? So that's why I've added quercetin in our list of things here. And I just started taking it. It's brand new to me. And why, why not? Again, for just about everybody, unless you have uh, sarcoidosis or other granulomatous diseases, you can't take vitamin D. So that's why you always have to check with your doctor before you take any of these. Regarding omega-3s, if you're on a blood thinner medication, you might need to reduce the amount of omega-3s than the standard recommendations that are out there. So you need to talk to your doctor first, particularly if you're on any medications. And I will also keep in mind, Dr. Peter McCulloch has really been making the rounds. He's a medical physician here. He, he published um, a, a, an article in December of 2020. It was in the uh, uh, Cardiovascular Medicine Journal. And it, was, uh, it has a very long title to it. Multifaceted, highly targeted, sequential, multi-drug treatment of early um, ambulatory high-risk SARS-CoV-2 infection. Whew. So in that article, he lays out a protocol that if you get COVID-19, that you should do this, this protocol before you end, end up in the hospital to try to prevent people from getting there. And by the way, one of the things that he talks about is several of these supplements, and one of them is quercetin. He talks about vitamin C and vitamin D and zinc and so on and so forth, okay? So you can see that these pieces are fitting together here, that you need to keep your immune system strong, and then these supplements here that we're talking about play a role in, the, in keeping your immune system strong. And again, the language used by, by this one article in particular is prevention and treatment of COVID-19 with six supplements. I find that very, very powerful. And even though I might be slightly sarcastic in, in saying that it should be an emergency use authorization by the FDA, maybe it should be. I don't know, maybe. Maybe I should uh, write a letter and make a phone call and see what we could do here. Obviously, these aren't drugs, these are supplements, so I don't know what we could do with that. But at least for ourselves as individuals and families and communities, we can strengthen our immune systems naturally by doing these things here. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller, thank you.